Welcome to another tutorial video. This time we're gonna go through a quick lesson on how to answer an Excel-based test or case study in an interview setting. And as you can see, we'll be using the indirect match and sum if functions. So a good question came in the other day where a reader submitted this and said, I just received an Excel test and a real estate private equity interview. They wanted me to summarize quarterly data in an annual format and use only one single function to retrieve the data and not modify anything else in the file. How can I do that? So to show you what he's referring to, the file looks something like this, where we have an annual pro forma, a summary for a property. And then we have quarterly data for the rents, for the vacancies, the free months of rent, the property taxes, insurance, utilities, and so on and so forth. And we have four quarters for each year here. And the challenge is how do you get all of this quarterly data into annual format here and use only one function to retrieve everything? So these types of tests are common in real estate, private equity, and other real estate interviews. One reason that happens is because if you haven't completed a traditional, more generalist role in one of those industries before, they're often skeptical of your Excel skills. So they like to evaluate them by giving you this type of test. The most common topics are lookup functions, each lookup and VLOOKUP, index and match to find data, sum and sum if functions and sum ifs functions, and the indirect function to create more flexible formulas. Oftentimes, these tests are posed in the form of a, can you write a single formula to accomplish task X or task Y type of question. Questions about formatting are not as common in these roles. You're more likely to get formatting Excel tests in investment banking roles. And if they want you to make actual calculations and get to a numerical answer, they're probably gonna give you a modeling test or an Argus test or something like that instead of an Excel test. To answer this question very easily, we could write separate sum functions to get this data for each line item for each year. For example, to get the gross potential rent for April 30th, 2015 through April 30th, 2016, we could go over to our quarter tab and we could just sum up the gross rents right here, these four. Then we could go over to the next one and we could sum up the next four and we could go through this process manually and we could do the same thing for the turnover vacancy and go down here and sum this up and we could keep going like that. Of course, it's not very flexible because we have to keep modifying the formula in each row and column to make it work in each new cell. So it's better if we can use the sum ifs function to at least make the date part of this flexible. So to do this with the sum ifs function, first we have to enter the summation range. So let's get this whole range of gross potential rents down here. And then we have to enter something for the criteria range. We wanna be using the dates up here at the top. So I'll enter these and I'll anchor this with F4. And then for the criteria, we want this to be less than or equal to the date of the year that we're in. This represents the final date of the year. So this should be less than or equal than this date. So let's enter a less than or equal sign surrounded by double quotes because we're joining text to a cell or the output of a function. And then the other criteria, once again, we'll reference the dates. But now we're gonna say that this should be greater than the ending date for the previous year. So I'll take this and join it with the ampersand and close that out. And then we can copy this across. Also, before I actually copy this across, I should anchor the two part in the E2 and the two part in the D2 right there. That's so that when we copy this down, nothing shifts around with that row at the top. So this works a little bit better because now we have one single formula for one single line item here. But the problem is that when we copy this formula down, we have to modify the summation range part. So I'll show you an example. If we copy it down to turnover vacancy right here, we can still use this formula, but the turnover vacancy is listed in row 16, not row nine. So we need to modify this and we need to change the first part to E16 through T16 instead. And then we can copy this across and we can sum that up. Now we can go through and keep doing that. And if we want to, we could just take the same formula and manually modify the first part of it. And it isn't really that bad because we only have three line items here, two here, and then two here. So it's not like it's gonna take us hours and hours to do this. However, the instructions told us that we need to create something flexible. So the question is, can we make this flexible so that it finds the text on the left that we're seeking and then goes down a different number of rows each time? The answer is yes, but we need to make the function 
more complex, and we need to use the match function to find the row number that we're looking for. So if you just enter this function that I have on screen, match B4 and then quarters B1 to B51, zero. Let's just enter that in Excel and see what happens. So I'll say match, and then we'll have B4, and then we'll go down everything in this column, B1 through B51. We want zero because we want to have an exact match. This returns nine because Gru's potential rent is listed in the ninth row of this area. So this tells us how many rows we need to go down to retrieve the data for gross potential rent. So you might look at this and say, okay, so we have the match function. And so we can go back here. And let's just go back to our original function here. And let's just modify this. And instead of E9 to T9, let's input the match function right there. So we'll put in our match function right there. And we get an error message in Excel. Now we could try to fix this by adjoining text differently. So for example, we could try to put quotes around quarters and then join it to the match function like that. And then do the same thing over here. But you'll see that it keeps giving us an error message here. And the problem is that it's not as simple as inserting a match function with the right parameters to get this working, because Excel only allows us to reference fixed ranges of rows and columns and spreadsheets with normal references. So you can reference cells B10 through E19 or cells E9 through T9, but if you want to change the last part based on the output of some function or the row that you're in or something like that, you cannot do it using a simple cell reference like this in Excel. Instead, you have to use the indirect function to create a variable reference to another spreadsheet. We can use double quotes to join text together with functions such as match inside the indirect function, and then we can use the ampersand to join text with functions inside that. So if we take our original function here, where we have the summation range and the criteria range, we can keep the last two parts the same. Those are not gonna change because those dates and the date rows stay fixed, but we can replace the first part as follows. Indirect, and then we have this long string of text, quarters, match, T, and then match again. To illustrate how this works, I will actually go back right now and just enter this in Excel. And again, we can keep the last parts of this the same. This entire last part of the function is gonna stay the same. It's only the first part here, the summation range that changes. So here's what we're doing. Let's enter the indirect function first, and then we'll enter quarters. That's the name of our other spreadsheet down here. So we'll put it in double quotes because it's text at this point. Exclamation mark, because that's the notation Excel uses to reference other worksheets. And then E, and we have dollar signs around that because we wanna anchor that part. Then we can enter our match function. We can use the ampersand sign to join this match function to this text. And inside this match function, we can use B4 over here. We'll anchor the B part so that does not shift around. We don't want the column to shift around, but we wanna find this gross potential rent somewhere in the other spreadsheet. So let's go to this other spreadsheet and get everything up here. We have that, so it's quarters B1 through B51, and then we'll enter a zero because we want an exact match. So this match function will get us row nine in this particular case, and then we need to finish the cell reference by not just stopping with E9, but we need to get colon T9 now after this. We can take the same match function once again, we can also take the ampersand part of this, and Let's put another ampersand after this because now we're gonna go and get some text and join the text with the output of this function. We use double quotes to open the text and then have a colon. That's just how you refer to a range in Excel. And then dollar sign T, dollar sign because we wanna anchor the whole thing. We'll close out the text with another double quote and then we'll have the same exact match function. So we have that. And now we can copy this around. And you can even copy this down if you want to see exactly how it works. And you can see it right there. So what did this function actually do? Let's break it down in a bit more detail. The first part here, quarters 
E with dollar signs around it, and then this match function simply starts building this quarters E9 to T9 text. So this first part, quarters, exclamation mark, dollar sign E, dollar sign, simply corresponds to this part. And then the match function simply gets us the row number of nine. So by including all these and by using the ampersand, we append them to one another and we have quarters E and then nine run after it. And then the next part of this finishes building the quarters E9 to T9 text. So this whole part with the ampersand and then colon, dollar sign T, dollar sign, and then this match. The first part is just text. So we get this text over here. And then the match function right here, once again, gets us row number nine. So that's why we get the nine at the very end of this. So putting it all together, you get this. When you have indirect based on all this information, the match function simply give you the nine part in this function. And then the rest is just hard-coded text that you enter because this text never changes. Only the row position, the nine here, could potentially change. Now, if you want to test this out and see exactly how it works, you can copy and paste everything here and paste it down for all of these and for capital expenditures, tenant improvements, and leasing commissions as well. You can sum up everything here. Obviously, these sums you cannot create with this complex looking sum ifs indirect function can sum up our operating expenses. I'm just using the alt equals shortcut to sum up everything. We can take effective gross income and subtract our operating expenses to get our net operating income. And then for our capital costs, we can use alt equals to sum this up. And then adjusted NOI, we can take NOI and subtract our capital costs. So first off, you wanna check that the function works as you would expect it to. That's what we did here, step one. Now, step two, you wanna compare the output to the manual sums for each year. You don't have to do this for everything, but you can do a quick spot check. So for example, for the gross potential rent, let's just sum it up here for the first few years and see what we get to. 500,000, 960,500, 992,600, and it seems like these are matching up so far. Now, if we want to check some other things, we could check the turnover vacancy or the free months of rent. For the free months of rent, let's go over and check this. And so we have one, two, three, four columns. One, two, three, four right here. And it seems like our free months of rent, 214,200 match up. We didn't check everything, obviously. This is just a quick spot check, but those are the types of tests you can go through to check your work here. And then another thing you could do is compare the totals across all the years to the totals across all the months and make sure they match up. For example, we could sum up the free months of rent right here across all the years, 642,600. And then we could go over here and we could sum this up 642,600, so that seems to match up. And then you could go and do the same thing for everything else here, the term of vacancy, the property taxes, the insurance and utilities, and so on and so forth. So that is a quick summary and explanation of how you can write a function like this. To do a quick recap and summary now, the most common topics in Excel tests are lookup functions, index and match, summation and summary functions, and also the indirect function. The SUMIFS function is useful for summing up cells based on multiple criteria or sets of criteria rather than just one criteria. The MATCH function is useful for letting you find the row number or column number of a specific number or text in another area or spreadsheet. So if you're looking for something and you're not quite sure where to find it or which row or column to go into, MATCH lets you decide on that. And then the indirect function lets you create your own custom references to ranges and cells in a spreadsheet. It's very powerful when you combine it with SUMIF or SUMIFS match and index, and it will let you create flexible functions to answer these types of case study and modeling test questions.